all-star, an all-star with a toe problem. My toe's this fine. This guy right here, <laughs> welcome to you. This is our pitching planner. We are glad to have you, Lauren Shahadi, alongside Eric Mack, talking about Jonathan Broxton right off the start. A sticky, a sticky situation because he might not play. Is this kind of like a start at your own risk kind of deal for now? What do you say? Well, Jonathan Broxton has dealt with this problem for a while now, and he's been the number one closer in all of fantasy through the first half. So I think you can still trust him. You just got to be uh, cognizant of this issue. And you also have to jump on Ramon Troncoso because that is the situational backup closer now for the Dodgers. Troncoso is a nice sleeper in deeper leagues where he needs saves, especially because the Dodgers are a runaway in the NL West. Broxton's built up this lead in fantasy at that position because of the Dodgers, and Troncoso is going to pick up the slack. And he's had that toe injury. He's been okay with it. Right. All right. You are going to have to deal with that toe injury for quite some time, probably the whole season. You're going to have to deal with Pedro Martinez as a Philly. What else are we going to have to deal with in terms of movement this season right, right now? Right. Pedro Martinez, he'll need a couple weeks. He's going to report to this uh, team in Florida for the Phillies, and they're going to see how his health is and then develop a timetable. It looks like it'll be at least two weeks because of the 15-day DL stint, and then maybe three. There, there'll be a few starts in the minor leagues, but then you can get some value out of them. But what you're going to see with the other trades that might happen, you know, Roy Halladay and things, you're going to see teams showcase some talent in the next two weeks. You know, Clay Buckholz is coming up for the Red Sox. He's a potential trade piece for um, the Red Sox with the Blue Jays. And then you're going to see guys like Brad Penny for the Red Sox get shopped shopped and showcased a lot of teams are going to showcase some of their young talent that want to get veterans and they're going to showcase their veterans they want to move like say a team out of contention like the nationals they're going to showcase some veterans and there's going to be a lot of showcasing going on but i don't think you're going to see a lot of movement until the deadline what do you think about buckholz coming up this week right right this friday i think a lot about him i think you're going to get an outstanding um you know productive pitcher and one of the best teams, best offenses in baseball, one of the best contenders. He's going to win a lot of games in the second half as long as he's not traded to a non-contender. And then you're going to get some of these other guys coming up. Matt Latos has been absolutely lighting it up. The South Florida prospect is um, potentially getting a call this weekend to the Padres. He is a guy to pick up in any league, and that says something because the Padres are an out-of-contention team with a poor offense, but Latos is so good he can be a winner. Then you got a couple of elite pitching prospects in Chris Tillman and Madison Baumgartner. They can come up by August, and uh, even on teams that don't score a lot of runs, they can be productive because they are elite talents coming up. Uh, Bumgarner is going to turn 20 in August, and Tillman is just 21. And then you got the veterans, Fausto Carmona and Brandon Morrow, working their way back in AAA, but they can come up in the second half and be productive again for fantasy. Going to turn 20. Goodness gracious, <laughs> so young. Here's another young guy we're talking about in your must-start, two-start pitchers. And that's Tommy Hansen, a phenom, a rookie right. phenom. An interesting situation with him this week and yeah, next week, right? Right. He was sent down to the minor leagues to get his 10-day option, but to keep working um, on regular rest. And he'll come up next week, so you could have confidence in him, especially with that first start against San Francisco. That's a favorable matchup. And Tommy Hansen, you know, um, even against the, the second matchup at Milwaukee, he's still going to be a guy you want to have in your lineup because the last time he faced great offenses, he had a two-start week, he faced the Red Sox and the Yankees, two of the best offenses in baseball, and he blanked them both. So coming back from the minor leagues, you can be confident in Hansen doing that, and you can be confident having him in your lineup. A guy I'm not confident about is Clayton Richard. The White Sox aren't uh, confident with him either. They're going to give him that first start. That's a difficult one versus Tampa Bay. And at Detroit over the weekend, the White Sox might even take him out of the rotation. They have eight games in seven days next week, so that will necessitate a six-man rotation. Bartolo Colon will come off a rehab assignment, start one of those doubleheader games against Detroit, and then he could replace Richard in the rotation. So sit Richard regardless, but you might even want to cut him because he could be out of the rotation. Next week, though, in line for two, right? Right. Okay, let's At talk about Jeff Neiman. He tops your sleepers list. Do you have enough confidence in his consistency? I think fantasy owners will He's been that. a little inconsistent, and he has some of those starts sometimes where he only goes uh, four or five innings because – the Rays don't want him to put a whole lot of workload. He is still a rookie. He's still developing in the major leagues. Um, and, you know, there, there is the potential of some bust there. Um, his matchups at Chicago White Sox, at Toronto, not great matchups, but the Rays are an elite offense. They're surprisingly in the top three in baseball and run scored. Neiman can be a winner even in those tough matchups. And then Doug Davis, he's one of the unheralded 
uh, fantasy pitchers. You know, his, his record is bad because Arizona's record is terrible. But his ERA is under four, and he gets that favorable second matchup versus Pittsburgh. Owned in only 50% of leagues, so half the leagues he's available in, and he could be a sleeper for you if you need a, a productive pitcher. Maybe not a winner, but a guy who can throw quality starts up there for you. A little you. production. Never hurt anyone. How's your toe feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. For Eric Mack, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll talk to you soon.